what's up and welcome back malik here today i had one trade overall you can see my win ratio is very bad right now we're gonna take it right back up um found a strategy that works so we're gonna just employ that edge a bit more and just kind of fine tune it right so let's get into the one trade that i had today I actually caught the sell after that um i think this was cpi move we had a good cpi move today it was just up and then we had a sell off for the rest of the day that's what can really get you if you try to trade the this happened within a second and then this was basically the rest of the day just dwindling down dwindling down right and that can really damage you so today i had a 52 dollar profit one trade you can see i hit a sell off the 9 30 close it at 10 45 yes i could have made more money but i wanted to lock in close to what i would look to as a two to one and just let that stay i was good with it trying to increase that win ratio so i'm just locking in some wins as you can see i've broken the losing streak three wins in a row now we're just gonna continue so let's look at where I entered this and where I actually closed it. So you can see at 9.30 here, I entered short. Let's lose my this. So I entered short at 9.30, exactly 9.31. So let's see how good this trade was. And then from that, that's what I'm aiming to just increase my risk as I get some sniper entries such as these. I can have smaller risk but still have a bigger size right so i entered this one at three nine one five six um stop loss at three nine two three one three nine two three one and that was about a thirty dollar risk still despite me entering here so it's about a thirty dollar risk regardless because i entered with a 0 0.08 and then i actually close it at three nine zero two five so let's see how much I left on the table, what was my risk, and then where I could have actually made out on this trade. So I basically made out on not even a two to one. Perfect. So it's showing me a 1.75. So it's a 1.75 to one. That's what I close it out for. However, it could have been a nice five to one, right? Or even close to six to one if I had held it much longer. And six to one would have given me about 180 on the day, which wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad about that at all, right? But I'm still happy that I got the trade. The direction was right. And I'm looking to make some more of these trades. Even this, I possibly could have gotten, but I was a little fearful because of how CPI moves. It moves up so fast that if I was wrong, my account could have gotten blown easily, right? So let's get into the watch list now. And I have some little extras to the watch list i'm gonna we're adding asml and also eli lily and also tlt which is a long-term duration bond i think it's a 20-year bond and we want to kind of monitor that we want to want to make sure that it's not spiking up if it really starts to spike up there might be a play there that we can take advantage of as well buying calls or buying tlt for that drastic rate hike and you would have a drastic move in the bonds as well right and as rates have been going up we'll see what bonds has been doing and then you see the inverse when bonds when you actually have a rate cut you would see the inverse of what has been happening throughout this entire rate hike period right so going into this so what do we have first bitcoin as usual so bitcoin is pretty much around the same level despite it being very you have moves that can be caught here though because you're seeing bitcoin go up and down then up and down right so at currently let's just go to the daily while we're doing things like this bitcoin at six eight zero eight five so not much basically up 500 from yesterday tesla tesla is up seven dollars from yesterday so not crazy either I MR, I would expect it at 11. Yeah, I MR a little higher, 10.61. This one has been showing so much strength in the market. Like overall, the market has really been holding up IMMR. 
bid farms we have bid farms a little higher at 2.43 very interesting very interesting bit farms but i ain't playing you you are high um nvidia we were at 120 yesterday that's basically 1200 don't let the numbers trick you wow look at this what is this what is this what is this is that real It's not real it's not even real i think that's just oh that's showing the split that's showing the split you can see the s here come split okay so nvidia one two five that's where we're at now um next one amd at 160 so a little higher slightly higher But not really, because you can see it's been around that range for weeks now as I've been tracking it. SMCI, not really much either at 774. ASML, I'm sure ASML is ASML is something. Something is going on here. So you have 1068 on ASML. So something is definitely going on here. Somebody knows what's going on. And it's moving up. It had a bullish day today. Also, it was a gap up. So you had a gap from Tuesday usually you see a gap like this you would see probably a pullback similar to let me see this was a gap you'll have like a probably large pullback on the day eli lily we're watching this for ozempic and also those alzheimer drugs so eli lily had a big push yesterday but it sold off closed a little lower but still higher than the day before i know we're still a higher we're still actually higher than yesterday despite it looking red right important to see that but we're at eight six seven so only up about two dollars versus yesterday and then tlt which is the 20 year treasury bond all right so we're gonna pay attention to what has been happening since we've been in a rate hike environment since we've started hiking rates you can see tlt has been going down anytime you have a rate cut Anytime you have a rate cut, you will see a spike in TLT. You see a very violent spike. And that is noted by what we have here at March 20. And when you have a spike in rate cuts, that means that the longer duration bonds are, should pay more than the shorter duration bonds. But right now we have an inverted yield curve which actually makes shorter duration bonds actually pay out more than the longer duration bonds, which is not normal. Usually when you have that, you nine out of 10 times you have a recession after. So right now we have TLT at about 92. If we see rate cuts, we would see, and if we see violent rate cuts, we could see movement up into that 100, 120 area for tlt so that's something to kind of place our eyes at and always look out for so two days ago tlt was at 90 90 um yesterday tlt was at 91 no we're looking at six seven where's six seven six seven tlt was close at 91 i'm not putting in decimals in this beat 91 so bonds you're not gonna see big moves in bonds you're gonna see a dollar move here or there right you're not gonna see much movement 91 we probably had it at 90 on monday well basically 91 i'll just call it 91 92 monday call it 90 91 so you're not gonna see a big fluctuation on price when it comes to tlt unless there's a drastic decision where you have a rate cut or a rate hike so when we had that rate hike when did we start hiking rates i believe it was in august 21 or january 21 january they probably talked about hiking rates here this could have knocked you out but very interesting we're just gonna keep note of that and i'll Basically, update you as we go along. 
and yeah lily so there's a lot more to talk about here so today what can the price tell us today bitcoin nothing mmr showing the strength bit farms showing strength nvidia nvidia what is nvidia doing let's take a look nvidia is at 125 a little higher a little higher i would say my forecast is nvidia is going to sell off after this bit it's it's typically that you expect the stock to go up but it sells off and nvidia might bring down the market expect sell off i would say eli lily higher but look low tlt nothing and what else amd nothing smci nothing i i hate there was i hate those ducks guys but anyways that's it for today's video and if you're even looking at my thumbnail i had a they can unit with an e4 error code that was a low pressure error code so i actually do hvac outside of this so this is what this is like my main job as i try to transition it to trading as i'm going to transition it to trading but i can also do hvac plumbing and a lot of other things as well so i think it's good to have multiple skill sets because when you buy your house you're gonna need ac you're gonna need heating you're gonna need water you're gonna need a toilet faucet it's good to be multifaceted especially when you're young you can gain all the skills and they'll come in handy i'm promising you promise you when i buy a house i'm not i don't think i'm going to be doing the hvac I'm, in fact i'm not going to be doing the hvac i'll pay for the hvac but when it comes to servicing it checking it i can do that right if i have the time at least and nobody's gonna jerk me around because I would know what I'm looking at and at least where things kind of should be at, right? And to dial in things. But that's basically it for today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.